It was a pre-Christmas miracle for a local family whose father and husband was temporarily released on December 21st after being detained by immigration officials for nearly six months. We followed Francisco Rodriguez's case for months here in Greater Boston. He joined us a few days before he was detained when he expressed worry about what the future might hold for him, and he told us his story about how he first came here illegally from El Salvador a decade ago, seeking asylum after a co-worker of his was murdered. And since then, he has followed the letter of the law totally. He got a job as a custodian at MIT, paid taxes, stayed out of trouble. Then in June, he reported for his regular check-in with authorities and was told to return with his passport and a plane ticket back to El Salvador, sparking protests by his friends and co-workers. Again, Rodriguez did as he was told and ended up being detained, missing the birth of his son, and six months of the lives of his 10- and 5-year-old daughters, U.S. citizens all. It's been exactly three weeks since he walked out of that detention center, but his fight is far from over. For now, his deportation is just on hold while his lawyers appeal his case for asylum. Joining me again is Francisco Rodriguez. It's great to see you, Francisco. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. And one of his lawyers, John Bennett of Goodwin Proctor. John, it's good to meet you. Thank you. Let me start with you. You were released early, as I said, right before Christmas. What did you do on the first day? I was so happy and impressive that uh, I was, like, I say... I don't know what happened with my life. I feel like a strange. That's the first sensation after you be in jail for sure. for so long, and I have like a mixing all feeling feeling mixing. But uh, I say that's a miracle. I say God is so good with me. That was where'd you go thing. the first day? Where did you go? Where I go? I go to. Pick out my daughter. At school? Yeah, at school. That's what I did. Beautiful they pictures were, of that, yeah. too. Were you, were you worried, Francisco, during those five months that your next stop might not be with your family, but your next stop might be back in El Salvador? I was worried, yeah. Yes, I was worried. Yeah. I was kind of close in November. How, whole, how hard was this for your family when you were, when everything was so uncertain, particularly your oldest daughter, who I'm sure understands lots of things. I heard her speak once. It was beautiful. How difficult was this time for your family? It was very hard because I'm the, the type of father that I always stay with my children. Uh -huh. I'd be moving everywhere. I'm like a shadow for my children. Don't yeah. have, and they miss all the time. But the little one, it was more kind of sad all the time. Even the, the teacher, they told me that she had a big change in her life. Mm. Mm -hmm. Why was he not allowed out even for a day to be there with his wife for the birth of his son? Well, you'd have to ask ICE that question, but they would likely tell you that, that, that removal remained potentially imminent and they needed to, to keep him uh, in custody to ensure that he'd be present for removal. Uh, a request was made to for him to be at least temporarily released at, at the time that uh, his uh, fourth child was born. That was denied. So um, I, I don't have a good answer for you on that one. And he's out now temporarily as this asylum appeal proceeds, correct? Correct. I want to ask you a question about something that the President of the United States said months ago that I think most people uh, remember quite well. This is in October of 2016. This is uh, candidate uh, Donald Trump. We have some bad hombres here, and we're going to get them out. Is there any piece of this man that fits that definition? I mean, he did come here illegally originally, because obviously scared because of the murder. Is there any rule, any compliance request, anything that Francisco Rodriguez has not met? No, no. He, he's, he's the polar opposite of a, of a bad hombre. Uh, he's followed the letter of the law ever since he's been here. He's been uh, gainfully employed ever since he's been here. Uh, he's been a very uh, doting father to his four no, U.S. citizen is. children. Uh, and he, he has no criminal background of any, any kind. So how do you explain, here. I know you're not a politician, you're a good lawyer, but is this a low-hanging fruit kind of thing? That despite the rhetoric, it's easy because he does play by the rules to find him as opposed to the so-called bad hombres. Well, I, th I think the, the, the orders, I suspect, are that if you have an opportunity to deport someone to, um, to follow through on that opportunity. And Francisco, unfortunately, has been um, uh, complying with the obligation to, to periodically report back to the government, and, and he was available to deport. Do you feel differently about this country 
where you've raised your family and where you've fled to years ago. Do you feel differently about this country after what happened to you, Francisco? I still feel the, con the country is, uh, is good, but I know there's some different kind of mind with the people. Some people think different, but because they don't understand the reality of what happened with different families. You, you, they point because one person doing something wrong, they think everybody are the mm -hmm. same. And that's, you cannot point them like that because it's, it's no, no right doing that way. You know, I saw the smile on your face the day you got out. I think it might have been with you, and then mm -hmm. with your children and your family. I saw the mm -hmm. smile on your face a few minutes ago when you talked about your mm -hmm. kids. But your future is still uncertain. Are you, are you worried about what happens with you? Are you worried about the future? I worry about the future because I'm a human. But I, <laughs> but I believe on God. I mean, I'm put all my faith on God. And I know this government, they're doing the right things, but sometimes they think different, I would say, mm -hmm. like that. So he has applied for asylum before and had it denied. Right. So why should he and his family and his supporters feel hopeful that this appeal, this round, will end differently than ended earlier? Well, uh, one thing that, that you should note is that his prior asylum case was never appealed to a federal court. Was not. It was not. Um, so the denial just stood. The denial stood at the immigration court stage. So, so this is a new procedure that we're pursuing, and um, I think the level of, of um, scrutiny that the case will receive now will be greater than uh, before. Can you give us the Cliff Notes version? Uh, the Cliff Notes. Oh, what's your argument? Yeah, the why? Cliff Notes version is essentially that if he were returned to El Salvador, he'd be subject to violence. Uh, not only because of what happened, what he was fleeing at the time that he left, but but also because uh, you know he's he's uh, uh, provided assistance since that time that that may uh, subject him to further uh, threat. You know, I'm a lawyer, but I'm not a very good lawyer. You're a very good lawyer, so I apologize for this question in, in advance. Does it matter in the law that he has children? who are United States citizens? Does it matter that he has a business, he has a job, he has the support of his co-workers? Does any of this matter? I know it matters to us as human beings. Does it matter in a court of law, any of those things? And that he'd be separated from his U.S. citizen children if he were sent home? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think if you're looking purely at, at the legal question and yeah, the legal statute, I, I think uh, the, the answer to that question is, is no, it's not necessarily re relevant to his asylum claim. I think uh, from a, a question of, of litigating the case before a federal court, I think undoubtedly those things are, are relevant, and, and we will, of course, make the court aware of that. What do you say to people at home watching this, not who are on your side, mm -hmm. but people who are in the middle and saying, well, I'm a little nervous about this. I don't know what the right thing is. He seems like a decent person, a decent family man. What do you say to those people at home? Yeah. I will say they have to give you the opportunity to know the people deep. It's not just what you hear about it. It's how the people live. You have to check, like, the records, stuff like that. If you don't have those records from the people, you don't know. It, it can be an American citizen, the same issue, and they make a lot of run stuff, but nobody knows mm. about that. And somebody can do the right things, and they don't know either. How don't. proud of your 10-year-old were you when you saw her speaking at a rally and your support? Yeah, I feel fascinated. I say I got blessing for my daughter yeah, because of that. If people want to help in any way, is there, can they write to the court? Can they, what can they do, John? Uh, I, I think writing to your representative in Congress mm -hmm. uh, is, a, is a potentially productive uh, thing to do. I, I think writing to the court is, is probably something that should be left to us. Um, Write to your member of Congress. Francisco, it's great to see you again. Best to your family. You. We all wish you luck, and John, it's a pleasure. Pleasure meeting Keep you. Keep up Thank your work. Thank really you. Appreciate it.